uh, I'd like to, to outline some of the things that I find exciting about, uh, about the xanthohumol and, and what I'm, the uh, conditions that I'm quoting and, and the things that I'm, I'm going to be pointing out uh, can be found really in, in published studies in PubMed which is the National Library of Medicine to date, so we're talking since, uh, since probably the mid-90s, there are, as of today, 203 published papers on xanthohumol, and the number is increasing every day. So there's interest in, the, uh, in, 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 in this flavonoid antioxidant all over the world. And a lot of people are excited about its, its potential. A number of uh, patents have also been uh, um, given out for various use, uh, they call it use patents, for, for xanthohumol for various conditions to show that people are really interested in the, in, you know, in, in, in the promise both today and in the future of uh, using xanthohumol as a, as a master molecule to help people stay well. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, uh, most of the papers that are published on PubMed are, uh, show that, uh, that, that xanthohumol plays an important role in the prevention and mitigation of various cancers. Uh, papers have shown that xanthohumol is actually active against 60 human cancers, including liver cancer, lung cancer, cancer of the colon, uh, blood cancers, uh, skin tumors, and, and, and many, many more. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's shown to be uh, active over many, many different uh, organ and cell types. Very important. Uh, and it works in many different important ways. The most important uh, is that it prevents what they call the formation of new blood vessels. They call it angio Genesis. Angio means blood vessels. Genesis means the birth, mm -hmm. so the birth of new blood vessels. In order for cancer to take hold, you have to have a, a, a volume of cancer cells, but they can't, they can't live without nutrients. Sure. So in other words, even if you're having a cancer and it's toxic, the cancer has to have its own blood supply. So any substance that can interfere with the blood supply, potential blood supply of a cancer is actually starving the cancer. Xanthohumol has been found to be powerfully uh, anti-angiogenic. In other words, it prevents the, the blood supply from being laid down. Uh, very important. Uh, it also inactivates, detoxifies, and eliminates substances that are called procarcinogens. In other words, toxic substances that are known to cause cancerous changes in the body. Also very, very important. Xanthohumol has been found in, in, in lab experiments to interfere with enzymes that can actually trigger the cancer process. Again, a, a very important uh, feature of the xanthohumol. Also interferes with enzymes that, that are responsible for the metastasis of cancer. In other words, if you have a cancer at a certain site, very often it'll travel to a distant organ. That's called metastasis. Mm -hmm. Xanthohumol will interfere with, with, with a number of the major enzymes that trigger these metastatic changes. And there's, there's one other major uh, feature of, of xanthohumol that's important. It, in, it, it creates a condition called apoptosis, where the cancer cell actually explodes. <laughs> so it, it, it is damaging to the cancer cell itself, but does not damage normal healthy cells or normie, normal healthy tissues. It does not interfere with the, as I, I mentioned, um, uh, the mitochondria before being responsible for respiration, it does not interfere with mitochondrial respiration and, and it is not toxic to any part of the body or to the liver. So you have something that's non-toxic that interferes with the cancer process in vitro on many, many different levels, which is something that has not been shown mm -hmm. with, with, with very many other substances. So the, the, this is really important.